Hello and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll be taking a look at the Hover Aware slider widget from the key add-ons for Elementor Premium plugin. Right now we're on the page where we can see some examples of its use. This widget lets you create very polished looking page elements that can change when a visitor interacts with them by hovering. You can see how the images here change when I move my mouse across different parts of the slider element. You can imagine this image is divided into four squares and when someone moves their mouse across or hovers over one of those squares, the image switches. And each of these squares has a different image associated with it. And it can have different URLs associated with different squares. Besides that one, that's the grid layout, we have this, the standard layout. With this one, the slider isn't divided into squares. Instead, it's segmented into rows. And when you're thinking of this element, it doesn't have to contain a bunch of images, you can use only two and then you'd have a switch like this. Of course, that depends on the specific images you upload, but it's a thought. So, we have all these ideas on the one hand, and on the other, how do we put them into practice? Let's take a look. Head over to the back end, and in the Elementor sidebar, search for the Hover Aware slider. Simply start typing, and when it pops up, drag it over to the page. And this is what the widget looks like by default. We have a placeholder image and some dummy text. Now, this text in the center of the image is indicative of the standard layout, and we can see that that's what's set here. The alternative is the grid layout, and that's the one I'll be using. But first, I want to quickly share some remarks about the standard type, in case you opt for that one. We can see that there are two items by default. Items represent images. Since I have two, unless I add more, I have room for the primary image and for one other that would appear on hover. The primary image will be the one you set as your first item, and the second, as well as any others, would be images that appear on hover. Also, with the standard layout, this item text is more for your reference, it won't appear anywhere in the element on the page. However, as you can see from this note below, this text will be shown if you use the grid layout, as I planned to. So, with the standard layout, the focus is on the shifting images and this potentially lengthy text that will be placed over them. Now, the main difference between the layouts, and I'm going to upload an image so I can show it to you more easily, I'll use this, okay, is the location of your cursor when it triggers an image. I mentioned earlier that the grid layout divides the element into imaginary squares, like a checkerboard. But the standard layout divides it into imaginary rows, almost as if it's lined. And the order in which the images appear is the order in which you added them as items. So when I move across the lower half, I can see the image from the second item. But when I move across the top half, I get the placeholder image from my first item. And it's this image, the one from the first item, that will be shown if no one is hovering over the element. So that's something to keep in mind. The other thing to make note of with the standard layout is in the style tab. Let me open it up. The first two options here will appear with the grid layout as well, so we'll cover them later on. Right now I want to draw your attention to the text position and item direction options. You get them only with the standard layout. The text position option is set to the middle by default, and that's responsible for placing this text here. If you like, you can shift it to the top or the bottom. I'll put it back. OK. And the item direction option is for deciding how the element will be divided, vertically or horizontally. So, if you hover over the top half, you get the image from the first item. And if you hover over the bottom half, you get the image from the second item. And as many items as you make, that's how many rows you'll have added from the bottom. However, if you switch this to horizontal, then the split will be down the middle, meaning hovering over the left side gets you the first item, and hovering over the right side gets you the second item. Any additional items will be added from the right. Alright, that's what I wanted to share about the standard layout, so let's get back to the content tab and switch to the grid layout. This is what I want to work with to create my slider design. And once we switch, we can immediately see that the new layout looks different. We no longer have the lengthy text in the middle. 
Now we have the item text, so that's this option here. And we can see it shown here in the element. Straight below that is the second one. So, since I only have two items right now, the element is divided horizontally into two halves, resulting in something that resembles the standard layout a bit. But when we add more items, that will change. Until then, I want to mention this option, the image animation. That's the effect we get when the images transition from one into another. The default one is fade, and we've seen earlier how it looks. Besides that, it can be raw, so there's no animation, the images just switch. Or it can be scale, so the images seem to squeeze in. This last one is the one I'll keep. Okay, I'll go back to the items now and set new images in place of the old ones. I'll use this one, insert. And then I'll change the text associated with that image. Okay, there we go. There is also this link field if you want to connect any of the images with a specific URL. Mind you, the same surface that you hover over to get an image to display is the surface that the link will be available in. Since this is just a tutorial, I'm going to leave this hashtag here as it will keep the element looking clickable. And then I'll customize the second item. I'll set this image. Insert media. OK. And then replace the item text. There we are. And now when I hover over the bottom half, I can see the image from the second item. And when I move to the top half, I can see the image from the first item. OK, so far so good. Now I'll add two more items for a proper grid look. Replace the image first. I'll use this, insert media. OK, now before I add the last item, if we look at the element, we can see how the new items are distributed. The first two are at the top now, and the new one is at the bottom. So we're starting to see the shape of the grid. The first two items now share the top half, the first item has top left and the second top right, while the bottom half shows the image for the third item, and its placeholder text. I'll replace that now. OK, there we go. And then I can add my fourth and final item. Set its image, I'll use this, insert, then replace the text. Alright, and I'll set a hashtag as a link placeholder. OK, there. And now when I examine the element and hover over different parts of it, we can see how the images shift as I move over the grid. With four items, I now have even squares taking up the slider surface. So this is the content I wanted, so let's see what else we have in terms of options. There's the Developer Tool section. It contains an option that can show the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode, making it easy to copy for use elsewhere on your site. Besides that, we have one more section in the Content tab, and that is the Help. This is where you can find some helpful resources if you need them. And that's all we have here, so we can move on to the next tab, Style. The first option here is for adjusting the image height. It's very straightforward. By moving the slider or inputting a specific value, you can determine how tall your slider will be. I'm going to leave this shorter on purpose, so I can show you the Image Size option. We have two choices here. Cover, the one we have now covers the entirety of the slider while retaining the original image ratios, even at the expense of bits getting cut off from view. Whereas Contain, if used, will shrink the image to fit the slider space while displaying that image in its entirety, no cropping allowed. And because I left the height at a smaller value, we can more easily see the effect of the Contain image size setting on the slider. Alright, I'll just return the setting to cover, since that's what I want to use. And I'll set 846 pixels for the height. Alright, our next section is for the text style. So here we can change the tag for all the item texts. You can pick anything from H1 to the P tag. The default setting, by the way, is H2, and I'm happy keeping it that way. Then we have the text color. It has this easy to use color picker, so you can set anything you like. I'll add the hex code for an almost black shade. OK. After that, there's the text typography. 
I don't plan on making any changes here, but we're going to run through the options just so you know what kinds of things you have here. For one, you can change the font family for the item text. There is a wide selection for you to choose from. Alongside that, we can change the font size and font weight. The default value here is 500, by the way. Then we have the transform option if we want to turn the text uppercase, lowercase, capitalized or keep it normal. There is also the style option which we can use to change the text style from normal, which is our default, to italic or oblique. Following that, the decoration lets us add a line under, over or through our text. Or we can use none of those as is our default. Finally, we have the line height, letter spacing and word spacing if we want to add more space either above or below our text or to spread out our letters or words. And that's it for the typography options. There's only one option after them, the text holder padding. It allows us to adjust the space around the item text and it treats the different item texts as a group. So when I start to increase, we can see how the text shifts on account of its holder padding being changed. Now, if you don't want to change all sides of the padding evenly, you can click here to delink the fields and then you can enter different values for each side. I'll set 51 pixels at the top, 51 on the right, 60 at the bottom and 51 on the left. And there, that's the look I was going for, my finished slider. I'll just hit update to save my work. And there we go. The grid is there, so the images shift when I hover over the different squares. And all the images I selected are here and appear with the proper animation, which means my element is done. To finish up this tutorial, we can take one last look at the page we started from. On it, you can see different examples of how this widget can be used, starting with the example I chose to copy for this tutorial, and how it can be styled. This page will provide you with an idea of what you can do and design solutions that you can copy. The important thing is, you now know what options you get with this widget and how to use them. Hopefully you found this tutorial on the Hoverware slider widget from the key add-ons for Elementor plugin helpful. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thank you for watching.